welcome to Creative Block, where your hosts speak. And I'm Sean. We interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We ask people on our social medias if they had prompts for this little brainstorming session we're going to do today. Today is a special episode. It's going to be really, really fun. And we have so much settings, characters, premises, and names. Um, that we ask for on our social medias. Today we have with us Pendleton Ward. What's up? <laughs> His voice is going to be like that the whole time. He has to speak in two word bursts. What's, 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 what's up? So this is the... So this is the point in the show where normally we launch into where did you go to school, how did you get into the industry, blah, 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 blah. But we're doing a little something different. We're zagging on them. We're uh, taking a little bit of a left-hand turn, and we're going to come right out of the gate with not only, hey... How do you work through Creative Block? But can you show us how you work through Creative Block? We're going to try to do um, a little brainstorming sesh in front of everybody. Uh, uh, maybe, what do you guys think? You want to try to make like a fake show premise? Well, I mean, it's only fake unless we decide to make it into a show, you know. But would you like to try to build a little a little show? Show how your world builds, Pan? Yes, 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 I like that it sounds like Sean and I are in the bleachers and Pen is in the middle of like, like a really big stadium. I think that's really, I think that is so fun because I feel like there is nothing scarier than a white page, like a blank page, right? I don't know. Do Monsters. Monsters are scarier. Monsters <laughs> are scarier than I mean, and that could that could come back later in into this. We uh, in yeah. a lot of show ideas, you need something to be scared of, right? <laughs> so uh, we do have a whole set of prompts, things that the uh, chat or the chat I, I stream too much, uh, things that our listeners have suggested, and they've been organized into settings, characters, premises. And and names even, um, and mm -hmm. we also have a customizable dice rolling system, and whenever we get stumped, maybe we'll go back to uh, to our prompts here. But uh, would, what do you think about starting off with a prompt just to get us rolling? What do you does that sound good? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, do do. <laughs> uh, Pen, uh, we named you the dice master. What out of these premises would you like to start with? Do you want to start with setting character? Let's look at let's do let's look at characters. I'm gonna roll a 44 sided die. Uh, is that something that you like to do on your own? Do you do you think of like character before like a story? I guess, or is that is it just change every time? I know what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. I think I like character thinking about characters. You can start, I mean, if you're making a pitch package, you can start with whatever you want, whatever is most interesting to you. Mm. Any idea can start anywhere. Um, nice. But I like thinking about characters, so let's try it. I want to roll a 44-sided die, and the number is 35, Ooh. which on the list of ideas is a very British robot. Okay. <laughs> what does is, what is very British mean to you? Uh, Mr. Belvedere... <laughs> that's it. that there's one example <laughs> i think of like little revolutionary war kind of guys revolutionary war i feel like my imagination is very like like stereotypical where i was just like monocle and bowler hat <laughs> i mean it's definitely yep. gonna give it away right you know like those are key <laughs> features there was that mr belvedere robot in on high oh yeah the new, the new season, or like the older one? The older I think stuff. both. I think both, right? I didn't know there was a new thing. Yeah, there's a they they rebooted it twenty years later. It's on HBO Max. I was a storyboard artist on it. This isn't an Whoa. ad for that, but <laughs> that's cool. I loved that. One high was a big inspo for me. Oh, really? This is really funny. Okay, so we have a British robot we're drawing. I'm gonna get rid of this monster I'm drawing. I like that he was licking the little puppy together. 
first it was eating the first thing that you were drawing. Yeah, I got scared. I was like, oh no, you need more room. <laughs> You're right. Monsters are scarier than the blank page. Let's see. Let's see. British robot. I feel like when you think about a character, what are the things that you think about first? Like, are you kind of thinking about how they look or their personalities or what are kind of like the... Like their voice? Yeah. Yeah. What are the aspects of them that you gravitate towards usually? Oh, golly. <laughs> it's just a free fall in there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it can be anything. I don't know. It depends on what I need <laughs> in a story. You, you're not a man of rules. <laughs> you're um, a man of freedom. <laughs> Yeah, free Jesse Moynihan called me free wheeling once, and I've I've glommed onto that as as who I am. That that feels like a a trucker compliment. Free wheeling, <laughs> free yeah, free wheeling. Like you're just letting your 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 eighteen wheels burn open road. I try to do that. What if the British robot's name was free wheeling? Free wheeling, free willy. Free wheeling. Does that make any sense? Would that free, go free together? Free wheeling. Free, I mean, wheeling. He could have wheels. He can have wheels. He could have wheels. Free wheeling. <laughs> Fr freedom. Is his first name Freedom or Fre Friedman? Friedmanton? Friedmanton. <laughs> I feel like, okay, I'm trying to think about how make a robot British, but without <laughs> going with the monocle and the hat. Because I feel like that's the first idea. C3PO is pretty british <laughs> that's true that's true that's true though yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I, I see it yeah it's cool to know that that's what planet he's from and what country we could also do like if it was like an old british robot it could be like like curl big curly eyebrow kind of style i mean you would have to do it metal or something but i was thinking about you know if it's an old british guy i don't know yeah british is throwing me off i, I don't have enough on text maybe even though i've been watching this british show do you ever watch taskmaster you all seen <laughs> yeah. taskmaster on yeah YouTube? It's, it's pretty silly really good I like it. Well, I mean, we can always we can always try to re-roll it. Do you, do you want to see if another roll gives us an idea? I'm kind of I'm moving with just robot. Yeah. I'm, I would re-roll it. I could do that too. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no to that. I want to roll it. Seventeen. The idea is a koala. Please. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Please. Please. Have you guys seen that video of the koala? the two koalas fighting for the same tree and it's so the two of them are on the same tree they're kind of like fighting they're kind of like pelting each other with their little hands and one of them ends up like like sliding off and like falling off the tree and he gets really upset and he just starts wailing he makes a horrible <laughs> they make horrible noises I, I was watching a video of a koala attacking somebody's kid and the parent was like, wasn't helping their kid because the koala is like cute and stuff, but it was just <laughs> biting the shit out of their kid. It's and like they can be so aggressive somehow. Yeah, it's so crazy. And then like a lady comes up to the koala who's like, like crying and she's like, but there's so many trees. You can have this other tree right there. Oh, I have but, seen that video. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good one. He doesn't want yeah. that. He doesn't want that one, dude. <laughs> no, I will say. We're talking about making a pitch package. Mm -hmm. Something I've I've come to uh, over the years. Like I feel like I've learned that I've, I've learned to appreciate the word vibe. I avoided it for a long time. I was like, Meh, vibes. Mm. Vibes. Who, who cares about well, vibes? Maybe it's a weapon that's that's inadequately wielded. You know, like people give vibes a bad name, but if it's used in the right hands, I think it's the most important thing that you can think about with a pitch or or a character or anything. And really, it's just like, what feeling do you want people to be feeling while they're watching your thing? Do you want them to be happy and relaxed, like a lo-fi beats to study to? Mm -hmm. Or do you want them to feel freaked out or sad or whatever, you know? <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's setting the vibe. And once you know that, you can, you can build your characters and you can build your environment around that so that you're creating something for people to feel. Yeah, I don't know. That's what that's what I've started with lately, so, at least. So what um that that sounds like a good place to start. What if we 
you want to pick a vibe? What kind of vibe are we feeling with? Now it's sort of a robot koala, right? Yes. That that kind of feeling. I don't know yet. I think I think I do usually make things stupid, stupid vibe. Because <laughs> it's the most relaxing. Okay, okay. It's the most relaxing feeling to me is to be dumb, and <laughs> and and freewheeling. Freewheeling, like kind of silly. I like that the koala looks a little silly with the to- the tongue out. So it looks like it's fun. So it would be kind of like yeah, like fun vibes. What if there was a koala that didn't have fun vibes though? What if there was <laughs> yeah, some there sort go. of battle? Like a battle koala with koala armor or something. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds like the beginning of it. Some conflict. A tail. What if the... It's so silly. I was going to say, what if the tail of the koala is the, the tail, T-A-L-E? But then I'm like, that doesn't really make any sense. Well, we, you know, we you can yes and off an idea like that. <laughs> In what way would you introduce that? <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the like battle koala does not have a tail and that's why he's antagonistic now are they Whoa. known for their tails <laughs> i because i don't know if i can even picture a koala tail it doesn't seem like they <laughs> have much of a tail <laughs> does he think I'm... he's missing his tail but they just don't have tails i think they have a little hoof right no they have a little poof maybe I think maybe. I feel like I just made this up. That's okay. This is a cartoon. We can make <laughs> a koala's tail of just a little poof. And it can also be somehow the koala's tail. The, <laughs> st- the story of the koala. That's what it is. I think koala's... Is that what you were suggesting earlier? That the tail is also the tail? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I okay. didn't I didn't say it correctly because I thought koalas had tails. <laughs> and so I thought that the the tail was the of the missing tail. But then I realized the actual the tail, T A L E, is that one koala got a tail. That's yes. it, right? <laughs> yeah. True. One one got a tail one and got one tail. doesn't. And it hates the other one so exactly. much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's the beginning the... of some conflict, right? Yeah. This is what our show pitch is now about. So, so this guy, he would have like a little, like a little band aid on his butt or something, or or did, or did he never have it? Why would he have a band aid if he? <laughs> I think like, it's it... almost as if like if you if a koala went out of his way to get a tail, he's kind of like a show off a little bit. So. All right. Hmm. And it's kind of, he's, I don't know, it's like, I got this thing that none of the other koalas have. So would the bad, would the evil koala have a prosthetic tail or would the regular koala have a, some sort of tail and... Yeah, the evil one is souped up, robot style. It's got a, a, a big, mean t- robot tail. Okay, yeah, maybe it's like, it's even like a, it's like a dragon tail whip kind of centipede looking tail. Doc That's off. pretty cool. And they're like, that tail doesn't even look good or right on you. I'm drawing the mean <laughs> one without a tail. <laughs> the little butt. This is going to be a hard pitch to sell. I'm, I'm imagining going into the executive's <laughs> office and being like, okay, get ready. There's two koalas, okay? You still with me? One of them doesn't have a tail. The other has a tail. <laughs> And I feel like the executive's already like fa- like dying and falling asleep. And I'm like, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. But there's a third koala. Oh no, this oh, isn't no. working. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, but I I feel like it's important to be able to pivot in a pitch. That's part of workshopping, right? So so we got to figure out, yeah, what's what's the what's that element that doesn't that does make it work? Maybe it's not a tail that we go with. Maybe I, I like koala, the duality of koalas. That's cool. Is it about two koala brothers? Is it about, you know, are they fighting over a tree? Is it like really simple? And at the end of the day, it's like a fight over a tree, but the tree is more than just a tree or something. Whoa. I don't is, know. I don't know. What else? What is, is the tree also a, a tail? What? <laughs> do you remember Two Angry Beavers? That was a show. I do. Two, I do. Two uh, marmots. I like that. I like that show. And um, what was that? How'd that pitch? How'd they sell that one? One beaver was angry. The other was stupid. Named Dag. Do you remember the beaver's names? (laughs) (laughs) 
Norbit? There was D- Dag Morbit. Was that Is it? Is it Norbit? Norbit? I'm looking it up. But that's how sometimes you can sell a pitch when you make one character angry all the time like Squidward, and then you make the other one happy and dumb like SpongeBob and, and Dag. Okay. So because of the conflict. I, th- I, mean, I, I, I like that. Norbert opposite. and Daggett Beaver. Norbert Foster Beaver is his full name. Norbert Foster Beaver. So I mean, do do we just rip that off? Do we copy that? Do we do we have a, a beaver that's yeah. <laughs> yes, I think ripping off stuff is a legitimate way to go about making a pitch package to sell. Are we thinking about ditching the robot stuff? How what do you feel? I feel uh, like you're sure. leaning towards um organic, or at least the way these drawings are going. What do you feel? Oh, don't do it for me. Only do it for you. <laughs> if you want to, you want to kill those robots. Well, I'm not leaning. I'm not leaning anyway right now. Well, I guess I guess that's that's a good idea. Let's not lean any which way. We're just throwing spaghetti. Yeah. At the wall, we'll see what sticks, right? So I'm I'm. I'm just shrinking my drawings to get them out of the way a little bit, but I'm not going to delete them. So I'm going to draw two koalas. One's going to be angry. The other one's going to be stupid and happy. <laughs> I do feel like that's a, that's a, a good way to kind of like, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because it shows that instead of thinking of a single character, it's thinking about a duo or like how there's more than one character and how they interact. So first we, we were kind of like thinking about vibes. So we were thinking about, and I like how you're b- talking about the audience first. Like we're kind of thinking about how the audience is going to feel and also how the execs are going to feel during the pitch. So it's kind of interesting to kind of think about how yeah. other people, yeah, think of the idea. I, I like oh, that. Yeah that thought and like that observation yeah you gotta you gotta think about it how other people are gonna feel i think some people i know i know sometimes artists feel like they just need to do them Mm. and i think that's valid too you can just you can just be you can just put your own poetry into your own creations and Mm -hmm. and create things that way i didn't start that way i sort of i became more poetic over time like with the ideas i wanted to express but in the beginning i was like i'm an entertainer that's really interesting. Really, that's funny that you bring that up because I'm a funny person. I just make it funny. That's all I was thinking about. Was like how to make it fun. Trying to make my friends laugh. Trying to make people laugh. How to make it silly and entertaining. That's so. It's really funny because I've always been struck by the poetry in your work. So it's really interesting to hear that you were always kind of first and foremost like thinking as an entertainer. I like that you're using the word entertainer because as I'm thinking about the creative process and the kind of stories that I want to write and create, I'm thinking about, it's not death of the artist, but it's kind of like, I'm making this for the audience. I want them to have a good time. So that Mm -hmm. would end up making me an entertainer, right? Rather than a quote unquote artist. I I don't know if you guys agree with that (laughs) definition, like dichotomy of art and entertainment in that sense. Yeah, I don't know if you even need to split it or define it. I mean, you, you're always an artist, I think. I, th- I think artist, artist, the term artist can be as vague as everyone, wa- anyone wants it to be. It can, it can encompass so many things to be an artist, I think. Artist is just, I think, for me, it just means you're expressing yourself through whatever medium, which is so many different ways you can be an artist mm. uh, by, being, by, by expressing your feelings. But you can be an artist and, and an entertainer at the same time, I think. Mm-hmm. Just when I was really, I was like in my twenties, and I was like, I, "Artist didn't mean anything to me yet. I didn't know how to do that. I thought it was, it was. I didn't, I didn't understand it, and I didn't like res, res, respect it. I guess I was like, what, is, <laughs> what are artists? I'm trying to sell cartoons here, baby. I'm making funny. <laughs> I like I'm a funny almost, person. It's like a punk in a way where it's like art. What's that? <laughs> Yeah, I used to yeah. I used to feel that way about art because I had gone to art school and like I was in painting classes and had a lot of like peers that made like fine art kind of stuff, and like I realized that I didn't want to do that and I 
And so I think I went too far the opposite direction where I was like, I want to make, not, I don't want the things I make to like mean anything. I just want them to be funny. I want to make my friends laugh. And like, I'm not an artist. I make entertainment. And I, I do feel like I kind of felt that way for a long time. But I think that I'm, I've been coming back around to like, you can do some of both and you don't, and, and I mean, that's a restriction, you know, uh, that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. No, I, uh, these days I'm definitely an artist. I spend a lot of time just like following my whims as I draw, like every, I sit and like think about what I want a lot <laughs> while I'm drawing. And then I move in that direction. I think that's all being an artist is. David Lynch describes uh, being creative in an interview and I was trying to memorize it for a while. I wanted to like reenact it. His, his, uh, like a monologue. It's like a monologue. Uh, it's been too long. I can't really pull it off, but it's like, let me see if I can try to remember it. Cause he's talking about painting and he's like, you put a little bit over here and then you say, no, no, that's not right. And then you take that away and then you put some here and then, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all it is. I think that's all, that's all being creative is. You're just decide making decisions about where you're plopping, where you're plopping. I do feel like <clears throat> there is a moment. So there is a moment when you know as an artist you you want to follow your wants and whims but there's also a moment when you realize like i i don't know if i have the skills to do the thing that i want to make i don't know if you know what i like for example yeah. you you want to make something like extremely funny but then you're like oh it's only a little bit funny and then you don't really know how to get to the next step and i guess yeah, kind yeah. Of... I mean, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, you have to learn, learn all these skills to make things. <laughs> <laughs> and when you don't have them yet, or you don't feel confident in, in them, you just, all you can do is scream and you can't, <laughs> you know, all you, all you can do is like sleep on it and then wake up the next day and look at it and try again and try to try to do a new pass, chisel away at whatever idea you're trying to piece together. Um, and then slowly over time, you can it's it's a skill that you build curating your own ideas deciding what's funny to you and what's not and trimming out the cutting out the fat and the stuff yeah i like that you're also bringing up that idea that it's like figuring out what's funny to you because i i do feel like that goes with the idea of figuring who you are as a person helps you figure out how to be like a better artist in a sense the more you know yourself and your taste the more you can kind of get closer to that yeah that makes sense to me i've been um gravitating towards little angry guy big ears and then big happy guy small ears oh well, yeah and uh um... oh yeah i see those big ears those are I've, great I've, i feel like this <laughs> yeah, little guy, guy is the ticket for me yeah I'm I'm still figuring out I'm trying still trying to crack this guy, but this guy makes me laugh so far. Yeah, I'd I'd be into starting a, a fresh page and just working on. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the new. I'd page. like to try the uh, the little guy. Cool. Myself. Well, let's 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 try let's try it. And um, if there's anything that you um want to carry over from any of your things, we should uh. Yeah, I'll go to a corner. Go to the. I did right. really like, the the like. Pen's really cute little guy with the eyelashes and and the poofy tail and he looks like he's just kind of like happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> that was so <laughs> i like it too <laughs> i think i think that we're figuring out you know sort of what wh what's what's what are those opposite qualities mm. that that we want to have these characters have so that they're visually interesting as a pair right Mm. Yeah, we're playing with design. That's fun. It's making us get excited about these koala characters. When you think about like a pair of best friends or something, I mean, it's, you know, obviously there's there's like guy and kid and his dog, you know, that sort of thing. What uh is 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 there just like a sort of like a do you try to That sort of thing. The well, cartoon that, that? Yeah, oh yeah, when yeah, I Adventure mean that, that's what I was, yeah, that's what I mean. I I was I was just saying like that's a <laughs> an obvious thing that comes to mind is a, a boy and his dog, but I was just wondering like if you if that's another vibe thing. If you're like I want people to like 
feel like mm-hmm. they're running around playing with their dog and like you know is that i mean i figured that vibe stuff out years 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 later after i worked on it after i made adventure time like i pitched adventure time when i was uh still in college when i was in my early 20s and all i was trying to do was make uh something <laughs> that would sell and that was that would be entertaining and funny mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then i i thought if i could sell something then i could make it art later i could i could i could fill it with poetry if i could just sell the car first mm. that was my loose plan for figuring out how to make money and be a artist at the same time <laughs> so i wasn't thinking about vibe i don't know but then mm-hmm. vibe was always there I, I did want it to be relaxed i was a fan of dr cats mm-hmm. and so i i knew i knew that i had a sense of what you know what cartoons i I liked and didn't. I didn't. I didn't like cartoons that were overly cartoony. I liked more naturalistic voices. Mm. I felt like it grounded the world. And I, th- I was thinking about stakes, like uh, in the same way. Like if the if the characters are more real and the world feels real and there's there's real rules that the characters follow, then then everything will feel more significant, more important. So I was thinking about that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but then all that stuff falls apart, you know, when you're making a cartoon, you have all these rules and stuff, but mm-hmm. you're tra- you're kicking out an episode every week, every, like a story. And so, you know, I don't know. It's, so that's, so at one point the main rule was funny wins. So like any of the other rules we had could be pushed aside if something was funny. So if someone did something funny that broke all the rules, like Finn, like one time I, this wasn't super funny. I'm just trying to think of a moment that breaks rules. Finn like lights a fire by rubbing his hands together mm. which is like this crazy superpower that he shouldn't have but like it didn't i couldn't figure out how to get him to light this fire fast enough when like in the middle of the story and it was a banana man episode <laughs> anyway funny wins rules get broken nothing matters sometimes things matter that's it <laughs> i like it and i i feel like that's been sort of the theme of this whole thing is like even when you find rules or you try to make up some rules or you try to give someone like the perfect how to make a bible advice like you're just constantly breaking the rules it's just you're you're feeling your way through like like a a catfish feeling for vibes with your whiskers on the bottom of the river yeah Mm. yeah maybe yeah maybe i like that (laughs) metaphor Mm -hmm. yeah and bibles pitch bibles i wonder if they even still call them that is it still called bible or animation i guess so Pitch deck, story, sometimes pitch, they pitch say. package. Yeah, but that's oh. the thing is like, there's all these terms for this thing. There's no one way to do it. When I was starting out trying to make a pitch package, I had no idea what they looked like. And then I learned that there's no standard. You know, you can make your own. So I just tried to make it sort of like a children's book. That's how I approached it when I was working on the adventure time pitch. I just did lots of drawings and tried to make it brief so it wasn't boring. Mm. And I tried to make it funny and exciting and surprising and I also tried to make it generic <laughs> I tried to make it like passable like for uh, an executive to want to turn it into a, a tv show which needs to be kind of broad at least I thought at the time I was like I have to try and make something that looks like other tv shows which I think you kind of still do like mm-hmm. some rules that you have to play by a little bit right yeah to sell things you like if you're going to make you know, if you're selling a car, you can't make it look like a giant fish. You have to make it look sort of like a car and then <laughs> put little fishy elements on the inside, if that's what you're into. Fish. Fish cars. <laughs> Designing fish cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to write down fish car. I don't fish know what car is great. I don't know what, what that means, but, you know, we, you never know what is going to be a fun idea. It yeah. could be code for a what a submarine. It's kind of a fish car. Uh, that's kind of a fish car. <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, are they trying to go? They found out that in, in the Mariana Trench, there's deep eucalyptus or something like. Uh huh. There's like, like seaweed eucalyptus or something, and they're on a submarine. I don't know. Uh huh. <laughs> I I don't know, dude. <laughs> Uh 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 i'm listening yeah we're in the trench we're on the we're in the trench it doesn't even trench bears trench 
something about that. I think that it's because it sounds like Trunchbull, which is from Matilda, and I like that. Trun- tr- trench Bear. What's a, a Trunchbull? A Trunchbull is the principal in Matilda who locks people in a closet with... Sp- like, basically, like a closet version of an Iron Maiden for kids, and she's like the evil character in Matilda and um I just think that name is I mean that yeah. the name is is fun to say I guess trench it is, trench yeah. bear trench bear trench bears <laughs> is that I mean here I'm write that down <laughs> trench bears now the opposite of this little guy ooh I like your eye I like your eye patch I like your eye patch <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah I was thinking about I'm sort of drawn to the the eye proportions in this like does one of them have like big kind eyes and the other one's like real real small eyes you know does one have like real beautiful eyes you could or eye maybe it's just one that you can just stare into little eyelashes Mm -hmm. on it or something soulful yes please i think that's cute do we want to roll the dice and see if we yeah, like time. A, like a a name, a name for one of these guys. Maybe do you okay. think that? Do you think a name ever helps you uh, figure out a design? Do you ever figure out a funny name first before a design? I guess never. No, I oh. usually name things way later, and then sometimes I'll list like fifty names. Name never really does it for me. But let's find out. I'm rolling the die. It's ten, which is das bullshit on the list of names. Das bullshit. Huh. <laughs> that's bullshit. That's bullshit. I think is that's, that is that that's bullshit. Is that what it's supposed to? I see it now. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, that's bullshit. I mean, uh, uh, we could also like, what if one of them's <laughs> name is Bo, be, just Bo. That's pretty sure. cool. That's kind of a cute name for a bear. I think that would be the little guy. No, okay. mm, I don't know. I'm still gonna guessing it now. Okay. Because maybe that like sounds more guy, like Bo? a. Yeah, more like a big guy. Yeah. Bo. Hi, I'm Bo. Okay, I'll roll. I'll roll for the other koala. It's that thing of the, um, uh, what is it? You know the Kiki and ah oh, shoot, what is it? it? It ah, it's like one thing, like an alliteration thing, where it's the, depending on the sound of the of the words, it can convey an emotion. Like Kiki sounds more like pointy. And... Oh, Kiki and Bobo or whatever. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Kiki is like a sharp character, yeah. and Bobo is like a round character. Okay, sorry, you rolled the dice. Uh, I did. I rolled it. Get? I rolled a five, and so the other character has to be named Daddy Wind Nose. Daddy Wind Nose. It's a good one. I think Bo and Daddy is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bo? It's kind of funny though that it's Daddy Wind knows that it's a long name and the other one is just one syllable. Well, it all depends on whether we want to use both parts of the name, right? Like, we we could call one Daddy, we could call one Wind knows, we could call one Bo. I mean, we could call him shit, <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like that's. I mean, yeah, it's we... not gonna <laughs> sell well. You have to think about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Das Bo shit isn't gonna work on any um children's network is call is a character named daddy gonna work on a kid's network sure okay let's stand our ground we on call him father mm-hmm. to be fancy yeah. <laughs> father <gasps> daddy and Bo. okay i'm 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 digging this pair yeah i do think that this big bear might may just be a bear <laughs> I don't think I don't know if this big bear is a koala bear. Like, is it just a bear and a koala bear? It could, yeah, it could be. You feel strongly about it? You think it should no, be I, a big bear? No, no, no. I don't feel strongly about it. I just the more that I'm looking at it, it well, is looking like it's just a like like it is it like a bear that thinks he's a koala bear? You know? Okay, that's interesting. I like that. Mm-hmm. One thing I'm starting to feel strong about is a big loose T-shirt. On this, on this, <laughs> on this large bear. Yeah, big comfortable yeah. Ni- a nighty, a nighty shirt. Yeah, almost. Yeah, 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 nighty shirt. I like that. I feel strongly about that too. I didn't no- realize I'd feel strongly about something like that, but I do. I like that. I like that. If the big bear is pretending to be a koala bear, but really inside, 
he or she is a bear like maybe that's why they like to hang out with the little koala bear because maybe they think they can learn to be a true koala that's out. beautiful <laughs> what would a reason be for now we're getting into into like motivation stuff what what would a reason be for a bear to want to be a koala bear is there is there a reason behind him like um, wanting the chill. grass is greener lifestyle you know yeah chill living <laughs> chill, chill living. he doesn't want to catch salmon anymore he wants to trunchin trunchin <laughs> That is true, though. Like, I feel like eating... Wait, what do koalas actually eat? I feel like I'm confusing pandas and koalas right now. Eucalyptus. Yeah, bamboo. they just eat, like, one thing, and then bamboo is the other one. So it is much easier to be a koala than than a bear in terms of, like, your activity. I mean, I mean, potentially, this could be a cartoon about two picky eating vegetarians. <laughs> and And it's a panda bear. <laughs> but okay uh, i think we need a nemesis character we need, we need some strife mm -hmm. for these two angry bears well what what happens if we roll for premise do, do you think that that might give us like a challenging oh, situation yeah. or an idea for a nemesis oh yeah there's a bunch of stuff yeah i'm gonna do it rolling for premise and an eight which is which is <laughs> just psychonauts the tv show so this is an, another it might not be the right established thing. property. Yeah, yeah, that might not be the one. Let's re-roll. Okay. We could rip off Psychonauts for these koala bears. <laughs> I'm going to re-roll. I know Tim. I can text him. Sure. <laughs> uh, He'll be fine with it. He'll be <laughs> 16. I rolled a 16. A door-to-door -door salesman who has a dark secret hidden in his little briefcase. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is that... That could, that could be a villain. Yeah, totally. Door-to-door -to -door salesman? Yeah. A dark secret in this little briefcase. <laughs> I do like that there is a dark secret in the briefcase just because it's like, it almost feels like it's it's the engine of the show where it's like, oh, what's in the briefcase? We just know it's something terrible, but we just don't know what it is. You know what I mean? And they get, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't know if our bears would go on a full-on adventure to kind of like figure out what the mystery is yeah because i feel like they're pretty chill like right of the the vibe i'm getting from these bears right now is that they're pretty pretty chill i guess except daddy daddy's the... <laughs> no daddy's Probably... not chill but... no yeah <laughs> daddy's just i guess he if he's not content with anything he's got Maybe he's always, I don't know, I'm just throwing mm -hmm. out, throwing spaghetti of the wall. Maybe he's, that's how he always gets uh, with the salesman, because he wants the next best thing, and the salesman has the, like, next, like, snake oil for him. Oh, it's a little repetitive right now, but. Mm -hmm. it, is it possible <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, like, is it, like, the head of a pyramid scheme, and he, <laughs> and he signs them up to be a part of a pyramid scheme? And they have that, like all these boxes came to the house. I mean that I can't tell if that, that might be just like a one episode thing. I don't know if we're if we're looking mm -hmm. for is this door to door salesman the overall nemesis? Is it like the arch nemesis that we're looking for, Ben? Yeah, why not? It's it, this is the main nemesis. This door to door salesman that's always trying to sell the bears. Oh, he's always that... trying to sell that. He's like trying to scam them all the time or trick I do them think trying to like, something. Take all their money. Yeah, he's trying to scam them out of their. That is funny. They're I think rich. I just... They're rich bears. Koala <laughs> bears. Are they rich? Are they rich? Yeah. They've, <laughs> they've stuffed all their money they earned inside the bamboo that they're eating. What do you feel about the 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 bear with the big shirt having a fanny pack with money in it? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> this pitch is getting more sellable by the second. <laughs> That's also merchandise. We can make a merchandise, you know, out of that fanny pack. Yeah, sell money. We can sell money. <laughs> we, can sell it, money. The, the, we have to write money not included in the fanny pack. <laughs> money comes separate. Oh my gosh. I do think it's funny if now, okay, now it's so silly because my brain is kind of taking this whole pitch in another direction where it's like maybe the duo, the bear duo is sort of like 
you know how in like uh roadrunner and coyote like we're on the side of coyote of wild coyote mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe we could be on the side of the salesman and we really want him to close the sale but these koala bears they're just too good and they just never fall for it are you proposing <laughs> flipping the script and the koala bears are the enemy because they're difficult to yes. sell? okay i'm on board <laughs> i think it's really funny <laughs> i i just thought of something what <laughs> i this is very stupid but uh, the idea that there's a fanny pack that's 112 dollars but it's a fanny pack with a hundred dollars in it. Yes. But That's... they sell it for a hundred twelve dollars. Right. But <laughs> but it's like you're buying the money in the fanny in the fanny pack too. <laughs> that's a, yeah. That's an important part of this uh, pitch now. <laughs> it has to be. It could be episode one. That's the first thing the salesman is trying to to sell to the koalas. He's trying to sell them a fanny. It's a twelve dollar fanny pack with a hundred dollars in it. It's a hundred twelve dollars. Well, because because of the dark secret in the little briefcase in this case is that money yeah. is evil. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. that could be a lesson. Clearly. There could be a lesson Clearly. in there. Now, do, are we still like even though? Like maybe the salesman are we root even though we might root for the salesman, like are the koala bears still our main characters that we follow? We just want them to get tricked. Like are they like <laughs> anti-heroes? <laughs> like are we following a pair of characters where we're like, I wish these guys would get tricked? I think we're following the businessman now. The okay. The salesman. It's Listen, I'm down. Maybe this is Okay, I'm like, I'm getting ahead of myself, but like, what if these two bears had like a perfect life and they had so much fun together and they were, you know, like, they're kind of like the Adam Adams family where they're always just like kissing and like, oh, I love you, I love you. And the salesman is so jealous because he has nothing but a little dark evil suitcase. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, jealous and... of love. Yes, exactly. So, so how is he... So if he, he gets revenge by selling them things? Is that is that oh, that's if why he can he... sell them enough yes. to where they they are they're penniless. He's taken all their money. He, then he can buy their love. He's, 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 he's making a, a best friend out of money. Oh yeah, that's a, that's Ooh. really good. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so he has like a partially finished like money golem. <laughs> yeah. Uh that is so funny. And the thing is that like maybe he doesn't sell only to the bears. He sells to like everybody in the little town or whatever. And he just hopes that like if he makes enough money selling all his snake oil everywhere, he the bears will like notice him or something. Maybe that doesn't really work. So my question <laughs> is what about these two bears makes it difficult for him to sell? Do do each of them have do, does does one of them want to buy everything and the other one ruins it? Do they both ruin it? Yeah. Uh what are you thinking? Oh, okay. Let's say the big one. He's like, "Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'd like to yeah. buy that." The other one's like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> what? No. And then they close the door. And the businessman's like, so it's sort of like the little guy knows for sure that businessman is trying to trick him. And okay, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. It's like, like that it's dynamic. kind of because it's kind of like you you think the salesman's gonna get the big one because if he can get the big one just by himself or herself, yeah. he there is a really good chance that he might sell them the evil artifact. Right, but okay. if the little ones around, then it's like all bets are off. So, so here's my issue right now with things that is <laughs> as it stands. Right now, I'm still rooting for these bears because I like them, and right now we don't have this salesman developed enough yet. So I'm having trouble empathizing with what they I think, want or need or look like. <laughs> I feel like the salesman. Just because maybe this is because I grew up with Looney Tunes and you know how like Sylvester and Wally Coyote and 
all of these villains, th their life just really sucks. They have nothing going for them, you know? So they're, like, miserable. So, you know, it's kind of like, they've never had to win in their life, so you kind of have... you A part of you kind of roots for them to just have one little win, but also it's kind of fun to see them being squashed because they're evil. Can we can we do a page on the salesman just to investigate? I'm already, I'm already on the next page working oh, on the salesman. Oh, oh, cool. Okay. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I like all his money. <laughs> <laughs> Is that his money for oh, there's a little eye on the money friend? Yeah, it's the golem, the mo money golem. He just needs a few more hundred thousand dollars to finish. <laughs> <laughs> his, oh, yes. uh, his That's... best friend. Oh my god, that is so good. It's like if he identifies with the two bears, he thinks he's the little one and his big bear would be the big fat stack of cash. Yeah. Oh, does he <laughs> think he's the little one but he's big? So he has to <laughs> make a big his goal is very high because he thinks he's small. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it is just too crazy. But I thought it was really funny that he identifies to the little koala. I think empathy is important and I'm not ruling it out. I like this. Uh, this is beautiful sculpture of a money <laughs> friend. Thanks. And I'm going to draw it the like a house of cards. It keeps falling apart. I'm going to look at the list. What else, what else we got? Uh, location. The setting. We okay. have not picked a setting. Let's see what that does to this pitch. Well, then 11, which is... A house where the basement is an attic. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> this is kind of like, uh, what's that book? Uh, the the horror Jumanji. book? Jumanji. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, house of Pie. I was thinking House of Leaves. House of Leaves. Uh, was is is that the book where there's like a room, you know, that's just like not the right size? The Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe? Uh, I... I the TARDIS. Art. Doctor Who. The TARDIS. That one's... Yeah. It's bigger on the inside. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while since I watched Doctor Who. Doctor Who. I think about Doctor Who a lot because he's such a... It's such a... He's a dummy. He's like a brilliant dummy who never knows where he's moving. And he's super confident. But he's also ignorant of everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's like this relaxing <laughs> hero you get to watch. Uh, Dummies are so fun to watch because you Dummies can just are fun to watch. You don't have yes. to think. They're not thinking about anything. They're figuring out stuff as they go. And then you can figure it out too with them and it doesn't make you feel stupid. Yeah. Well, we definitely don't want a character that makes us feel stupid. Do we want a salesman to have a big hat or a small hat? Mm -hmm. Is that a little salesman right there with a big hat? Oh, <laughs> I, I no, I was, I was sorry. I was oh, drawing I his, were... his tie, but I, I also... What do you feel like about a little salesman, though? <laughs> I I don't know. I can't tell. I mean, is, is this are we turning in? Is this plankton from SpongeBob? <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if uh, a little guy trying to trick two characters is this is this plankton? Yeah, it's plankton. It is exactly plankton. Oh, his hat got puffier and bigger in yours. <laughs> oh, no, I like I like it. I was just trying to make it different. So, from yours. Um, the thing is, is I think because. Like, I, I still feel like we want to follow our koalas. <laughs> you love the koalas. No, 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 no. It's not It's not that, hmm. I think it's because they have a relationship with one another and they can talk back and forth. And that feels like it'll be a funny dynamic to follow. But this guy mm -hmm. does feel all alone right now. Mm -hmm. um, unless we, I mean, I guess he can talk through his money the guy. thing. He talks to the evil thing in the briefcase. Oh, oh, oh my god! The evil and... thing keeps saying to trick people. Yeah, or or it just talks about you know how's your day going. <laughs> oh. I'm sad because the koalas didn't buy the <laughs> buy what I was asking them to buy. Well, what are you are you gonna? You should try again. Should That's try. a good idea. Thank you, evil briefcase. You're so supportive of. <laughs> he calls it evil briefcase. He knows it's an evil, evil one. <laughs> He's aware that it's evil. Okay, yeah, it's real nice. You, it's you're nice. selling me on this. Yeah. I'm I'm coming around. I like that the briefcase could like flap its like the if it opens and closes it could be like it's flapping its mouth. Oh yeah, that's cool. It has like an eye on it maybe. 
I do, I because here's the thing. I do feel like the salesman is dumber than the koalas, and I think that's why I kind of gravitated towards the salesman because he's mm -hmm. trying so hard to do something so impossible. Yeah, and and I think that it's not that I don't want to empathize with him. I think that I don't relate to a, just a salesman. Like I've I've trouble like thinking mm -hmm. like a salesman would think. But if we, I I think now that there's a little bit of um, like. There's someone like manipulating the salesman or this briefcase sort of feels <laughs> like it's in control. And I, I like, I like that. I think that's feeling good. So, <laughs> so if we track through the motivations of the salesman, right? The salesman wants to, uh, basically the salesman wants a friend, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. the briefcase wants to sell, <laughs> And tricks him into selling for him, right? And to make his friend, right? They have of money. <laughs> I'm just I'm just imagining the executive listening to this. <laughs> and so just being like, oh no, no. Oh no. No, my now my question for you is if he already has this friend telling him what to do, that is the briefcase, why does he want to make the money friend? Or is the briefcase mean to him? Does he owe the briefcase something? Like, what's that relationship like? <laughs> it's a good question. It's an important question that needs to be answered. <laughs> <laughs> and the execs want to know. <laughs> yeah. The execs want to know this. It's funny that you keep bringing it up, like, imagining to pitch this to the exec, because I think it's like, it's, it's really funny because it's true. I think, like, an exec. Yeah would probably be like, this is a little far-fetched. I don't know if I'm following this. Because there's a salesman and koalas, and this is already like... Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so, so no, that's a good thing to talk about. So if... Mm -hmm. So you want you don't want it to be complicated. You want it to be able to be explained simply, right? Yeah. How, how, how do you think about that? And then maybe, like, is there a way... To, do you have any ideas of of how we might simplify something like this, or or no. how or how I someone? Don't. Okay, well, well, how do you think about simplifying things? Yeah. It, and maybe we can start there. That's hard to answer. I feel like um, I would probably just start with a more traditional premise. Okay, like good good versus evil, or something like that. Mm. I mean, that's that's what simplifying. Like, if you're trying to make stuff that's more familiar. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what if, I mean, potentially characters like this could hypothetically work in a story versus uh, of, of, of good and evil. Maybe they're not, uh, what is it? Maybe they're not the main characters or maybe they, this isn't the main storyline or whatever. But if we sort of like said, okay, we need a simple relatable thing and then, you know, figure out what would get scrapped or what wouldn't. Yeah. No, you're, you're barking up the the right tree with these questions, Sean. Yeah, the businessman who has an evil suitcase that tells him what to do and he's trying to make a friend that's made out of money and he's trying to sell the koala bears something so that they spend all their money and so that then he can buy their love and and form his creature, his money creature into his new best friend. I don't know how to simplify it or or turn it in. I think, I think at this point, if I was really trying to make a, a, a show Bible and this is where I was at, I would throw all of this in the garbage. And I would start. I would, I would start over. <laughs> and I would and, start and, over with a simpler idea. And you're and you're probably and you're probably right. But you know what? A sim like like if like say we didn't have the businessman. Say we had two koala bears, and it's friendship or or whatever good and evil or like if yeah. if, if we had a simpler thing. And figure right it out. The, yeah, the, you know? the koala bears can be anything right now. Like they're just two friends. Mm -hmm. It's a buddy, it's a buddy comedy. Right. Mm -hmm. So and then, so, so potentially yeah. that that would mean that like if we came up with a simple idea, potentially you could have those two characters. And, yeah, that's true. And, yeah. And it just depends on how much you like those characters. If you love those characters, if, you know, if someone at home is like, has a situation that's exactly like this, you know what I mean? And they're like, man, I love these characters, but how do I turn this into something that people can relate to? 
then yeah, may, maybe, maybe getting rid of businessman and, and, you know, someday they're like a one-off character in an episode or something. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're, maybe that character is too complicated. Is there something relatable like that happened, you know, uh, is, is there something relatable about two best friends that you could latch on to that maybe there's like a v- villain roll for it. that, you know, let's roll the die. Okay. Hell yeah. Let's roll the die for another, um, antagonist, for another, pr- another premise, a premise. Mm. Yeah. Cause really the, the, the two friends right now are kind of blank slates and yeah. what they mm-hmm. need, right, right. What they need is more specificity to be interesting. They can be anything right now. Mm-hmm. That's true. So let's look at this premise list. There's 17 premises. I'm going to roll a 17-sided die on the internet. Go. I rolled a 10. Hard-boiled potato and black-eyed pea freelance private eyes. Hmm. All right. We got some Well, hard-boiled potato, yeah, could be one bear, and black-eyed pea could be the other bear. And together, like they're the names. freelance private eyes. Mm-hmm. If we wanted to stick to the premise. Yeah. Private eye stuff comes with a lot of baked-in uh, vibe, too. That's this noir. Mm-hmm. Noir feeling, smoky yeah. bars, jazz, <laughs> which is a nice relaxing vibe. It's a, it's a trope and it's a cliche and you can, you can put it into your pitch and try and sell someone on a pitch. That's about private eyes. Mm. Um, koala bears, this is, koala bears. This is, this is a crazy pitch and maybe this is too stupid, but what if it's a noir detective koala bear? It doesn't even need to be a koala bear, but for for this, it's a it's a koala bear, and he 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 smokes he smokes so much that there's a a cloud of smoke that's shaped like another bear that's his friend. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm... you may you may say that I've just tried to make it even more complicated for no reason automatically. I feel like we just got rid of the businessman who was making a friend out of money. <laughs> I, well, I, I, that is true. Well, I was, I was, I was saying that like to tie, to tie the two characters together in some sort of like, it's, it's like Aladdin and his genie or like, you know, it's like a private eye and the smoke that comes out of his pipe and they talk, but that doesn't have to be anything. I was just throwing out wild shit um yeah i like it smoking is gonna really lend to this thing no that's true um you're not supposed to put cigarettes in anything well i mean in this these days you know, is it vape <laughs> no you're not supposed to put vape in anything either <laughs> okay okay so we ditched that is there something like what about like a, a noir kind of like detective mystery do you feel like is is the relatable thing that we could go with? Is it like, is that relatable in itself and it's easy to explain, or do you it is feel easy like to explain because it's a cliche? It's already it's been it's it's uh, it's well paved ground. It's, uh, it's an old idea. So really, just start making your noir story, and then in the details, mm-hmm. you make it exciting to you, make it different. If we want to do private eye stuff, we want to roll again. What else we got? In the premise zone. Oh, I rolled the same business salesman thing again. It's a sign. Hard <laughs> boy. I did notice that there's multiple salesman pitches in these premises, which is kind of funny to me. I rolled a 14. After receiving a magical book from the future, a glory seeking knight decides to do the deeds first in order to pass them off as his own. That is so funny. There was a manga that came out recently just like this, except that. Instead of being a knight, it was a uh, mangaka who would get the shonen jumps from the future, and he would draw the manga from the future to get it, his manga uh, published. I, I was like, that's pretty, Whoa. That's pretty high concept. Plagiarism. It's cool. Yeah. Future plagiarism. Uh huh. It's kind of interesting. I'd be interested to know how you sell a, a manga. It like, seems like you can, you can get away with any any concepts. Yeah, it's it's very similar to pitching a show idea. From what I've gathered from all of the little bits and pieces that I've put together from reading stuff online and reading mangas about the manga industry is kind of like you you 
come with a pitch to or like a chapter that you, you draw and show to an editor you kind of like book an appointment with an editor kind of like how you would book an, an appointment a general with like a tv executive then you kind of show it to them and usually they're going to be like eh, that doesn't make any sense or like that doesn't fit for us uh but come back to us with like another idea and then they'll you have to come home come bring some couple other ideas but usually I, I feel, and I could be wrong, but I feel like usually every time that you schedule a new pitch with a editor for manga, you have to come with the manuscript. So it doesn't have to be finished pages, but it has to be the equivalent of a storyboard and kind of you show it to the editor and they can either completely reject it saying like, oh, this doesn't fit or this is kind of too weird. It doesn't make sense. Or they will be like, oh, there's something here. And here's some notes and but, try to hit these notes for this chapter. But manga and anime is they're, they're so wild. Like how do mm. they decide like some of the wilder ones? I'm like, how did this one get made? You know, like just premise wise. I think also because from manga, it's like, because they're killing off like a series kind of pretty often enough with the, the readership. So they can start a new series pretty Easy, mm. like easily and also paying one person to do a manga is so cheap compared to making a tv show you can pay somebody for just a couple of months and it's not that much money and true and then if nobody likes it you can just kind of like kill it and then you can just have the next ones start up like in the yeah. magazine what um uh, do you, are you feeling like we follow your gut pen and just scrap the ideas that we've made so far and just try to <laughs> brainstorm a complete new one? No, I I think what you said makes sense. Keep the bears. The bears are we can turn we can we can use the bears easily. Mm -hmm. The the specifics of the uh, salesman's life and motives right now are maybe maybe a little too complex mm. for a for a mainstream TV show pitch. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're right. It could be a side character, um, but it's kind of a weird. It's maybe it's a little too weird to to convince a network to spend millions of dollars on. So I guess, like, what? Like, we figure out. Is it a mystery? Are we? Are we? Fi are, are we figuring out a a fun mystery for these particular characters to solve? Sure. Or? Yeah, detective stuff. Yeah, detective stuff. Um, Here, I'll roll one more time. There's Moidas. Right, what's five? You wake up on an island where everyone has a ridiculous amount of technology, but no outlets. Ah! But no outlets. I'm going to roll again. <laughs> 15. The story of a raisin named Charlie on a quest <laughs> to become a grape again. Hard, hard to fit in with, with the... the, uh, the what, well, uh, what, if we roll, what if we roll for a character? Is there mm. like a, a particular character that comes to them with a case or... Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll do that. Rolled an eight. A lobster. Mm, that's so cute. <laughs> so when you when you think about characters, and because um, I, I, I do think that they're, it's easy with cartoons to sort of like make a rule that there are no rules and any character is allowed and all rules, whatever, can, can work. Do you have times where you activate like... Uh, that char that kind of character wouldn't work in this world, or like, oh, we're we have two koala detectives. There needs to be some like normal characters around them, or it, or for you, is it sort of free game? And like, uh, a I always lean guy towards be fine. Yeah, whatever is interest. Like, I I sort of lean towards mayhem. You know, whatever's <laughs> whatever's funny. If it's weird, I mean, we already got two koalas. I'm down to uh have a wild lobster pop in <laughs> that's fine with me all right all right it's kind of funny i wonder if the pi koalas are like i wonder if they're if they're like good at their job if they're like good pis or like are they like reputable you know what i mean like oh people come to them with like difficult cases or are they just kind of like bumbling idiots and then they just get these kind of like silly kind of dumb cases like bumbling is easier to write mm -hmm. like what if, if they're you want known... them to be good you have to actually solve the case yourself when you're writing <laughs> what, what what if they're known for like like 
everyone comes to them with the stupidest cases. Like people are like, where's my keys? Or like, Mm -hmm. I can't find my my dog or or something. That's a great idea. (laughs) Stupid cases. That's a good hook too. That's that's stupid. That's a, good, cases. that's a sellable hook, maybe. Mm. <laughs> stupid cases, stupider characters. Now, do they have little detective hats? I don't know. <laughs> do do we change what they look like now that they not? I I still like a long shirt on the bear, though. I honestly <laughs> think they can still be just the same designs that we had with the long shirt and the little guy. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I did put a hat on the bear just now. Oh, I like that hat. <laughs> that eye almost looks painted on. <laughs> <It> looks... <laughs> I like it, though. He almost looks like a cyclops right now. Yeah, it's dominant. All right, One so dominant, beautiful eye. Is it a... um? Okay, so what, what kind of a lops- What kind of crime would a lobster come to them with, you know? And then this eye works on the bear, but it's his private eye. Oh! <gasps> Oh, I like to keep. I like to keep some things private. Yeah, he'll look at some things. This one's for winking at my lover. This one's just for my wife. Can we ro- let's. I'll roll for the lover's name, and then you can. The lover's name is Will. Actually, Ooh. Will. Actually, is there a pun? Is there some internet thing that I don't understand? It's probably just their screen name or something. <laughs> Because he's also like, hmm. Yeah, I was wondering if it was kind of like taken out of like a longer prompt and maybe it like was a pun. Well, uh, oh, well, actually, that's, yes, the, that's pun. the Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually. Well, actually. <laughs> okay. So, um, lo- lobster, right? Lobster. Mm-hmm. A lobster comes to them with a case. Yeah. An evil case. No, I'm joking. An evil briefcase. Yeah. Yeah, is this like a private eyes in the case of the case? I guess it should be, at the very least, at the beginning, should it start off as like a not complicated thing that they make more complicated than it needs to be? Like, it does the lobster, he's like, who bo- who boiled me? And he's like, red. And like, ah. they go to the crime scene and it's like a pot. And like, he's like, I was pushed into the pot and now I'm cooked. <laughs> I'm close. It's kind of funny because it's got like that vernacular that kind of goes with like tropey private eye stuff. I have a really hard time making crustacean or bug face characters like relatable characters in a way that like mm. I what like Pepe the Prawn. Mm. You know mm. that Muppet? Mm. Pepe the Prawn? Oh, yeah. I think it, that one's a. That one's a good example of a one that's done well that I'm like, yeah, that's a funny character. I'm trying to draw Pepe. Who boiled me? I'll pay you in shells Ah. from the ocean. We got a case. I'll literally pay you with an arm and a leg. You can eat it. Me. Ah. I'm delicious. I'm trying to sketch out for the sake of trying to finish a a pitch on on, on this creative block. (laughs) <laughs> the, pa- the pages that we need to get done yeah or at the very least sketching just like you know what would go here you know i think would be good i think something that could also be interesting instead of going all the way to a like a full pitch bible could maybe just to do like the equivalent of like a three pager or like a one pager because oh, sure. I, f- I feel like it's kind of rare to go to an executive with a full blown pitch packet, right? Oh gosh, I don't know. That's the thing. Or is that is that <laughs> what you do usually? Uh, yeah, I would fill it with drawings because that's the only way I know how to try to convince someone that something's cool is like by doing a doing a bunch of drawings. Mm. But you're right. I've lately I have seen this is just like some, from my friends that are pitching things, just one page or three pages, something real short. Um, but no, I don't think there's an answer. I don't think there's one way to do it. You can do it any any which way. We're here to learn how you do it. So what? Yeah, why don't why don't we why don't we try your your gut instincts for 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 this hard to sell? You know, we've been through a journey, a journey here trying to figure out who these bears are. Are they relatable? We figured out that they're private eyes. They solve stupid cases. <laughs> 
I'm I'm writing it out right now. Nice. You have a title page where you do mm -hmm. like a movie poster of your characters. And then on the next page is the show show synopsis. Synopsis. Mm -hmm. Just do a paragraph or two about the most important stuff about your show. Try and sell it in a paragraph. Is this mm -hmm. vibes? And that's where you'll yeah, you could put your vibes there too. <laughs> <laughs> you could even write vibes if you wanted to. The show. Two hard boiled, stupid koala detectives are known for only receiving the stupidest of cases. They accept them because I don't know why yet. Are they rich still? Do they still have Do they get paid in eucalyptus <laughs> leaves instead of money or something? Or is it just because they get paid money? Are they trying to get rich enough to do something? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They they'll need um some motivation at some point. Mm. Do they, they can't just... be rich anymore. I don't think they can be rich anymore. I, I just don't think that people are going to relate to the to to two rich koalas that much, right? Unless they're buying like really cool stuff that everyone's like, "Oh, I want that." I'm jealous of that koala. I don't know. Yeah, sure. They're richy rich, that like old. Batman. Are they like Batman and they have so much money, but it doesn't matter because they're stupid? <laughs> Yeah, that's, I like that. It's just like the equivalent of throwing money at a problem. Yes. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're too stupid. They're they're filthy rich, but they don't realize that they don't need it. What? Like that they don't need to do any of the that they don't need to work. They just are doing it for fun or what? <laughs> I feel like automatically when you give them money, there's like less things to less stakes. We, less, yeah. Like what are their motivate them? Right. There's less there's stakes. stakes yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, it's not, we shouldn't do that. I do. <laughs> we shouldn't it, have the money. <laughs> yeah. It is funny. If we're trying to make these characters more interesting, they need to have desires. Why do they do this work? The stupid, stupid work that they do. Is it that just that they want to go on vacation? That they want to go? Yeah, that's good. They're dead end lives. They're dead end stupid lives, and they just keep looking at this billboard of like paradise. Oh, there's all there's this billboard right out front of their their window in their in their dingy Hell's Kitchen apartment, you know, and it's yeah. like it's it's just like an old billboard that no one took down. It has like a picture of Bora Bora on it or something like. They can't escape it from their office or from their bedroom. They have like a view on it. Yeah. If we don't get a stupid case soon, we're going to have to sh close down the office. Bo, what's his name? Bo. <laughs> Daddy and Bo. <laughs> Daddy. Yeah, did we get new uh, new names suggested? What what was it? It was uh, Hard Boiled Potato and Black Eyed Pea. Oh. Uh -huh. were... I don't know if we're using those. If, you, if we want to do Bo and Daddy, those might be easier. <laughs> Let's stick with Bo and Daddy. Oh, that's gonna be sad if we have to shut down the office. We'll never get to go on our vacation, our dream vacation. I know it. Then the lobster saunters in. Is yep. the lobster? <laughs> is there a case where they have to travel to their dream vacation spot, and it's not? It's like grass is always green, greener kind of situation. Where I don't know if if taking them out of their <laughs> comfort zone right at the beginning is good or bad in this case, but. I was just thinking about lobsters in like tropical areas. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Why we not? shouldn't see that 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 perfect place yet. That's like sure. the that's the last that's the season arc. That's mm -hmm. the last episode. They finally get to go to paradise. Right now, there's a lobster who's like, "Who boiled me? Who boiled me? Who boiled um, me?" Um, I live in the ocean. I was sleeping, and I woke up boiled, and that doesn't make any sense. How did they get a pot? <laughs> And fire <laughs> into the ocean. I need you two stupid detectives help to help me figure this out. It's like really obvious that there's like a seafood kitchen, like right, <laughs> like right downstairs or something. Yeah. So these these idiots don't see that kitchen, and they spend a they spend forty minutes forty it's a forty forty minute episode. This is are these forty, 40, minute, 40 minute, minute. We're pitching forty minute episode shows. We have like <laughs> D plots. Yeah, C plots, D plots. This is the this is the new forty minute TikTok that no one knew they wanted <laughs> until now. Okay, I like that. I like that. That feels good. Now, now, does this feel like one like 
like in this series, would you indicate that each episode would probably have a different case, right? This isn't one case that we're trying to solve over the whole thing, is it? And would you uh, indicate that? Yeah, I mean, we, it could be one case over the whole thing. I think we'd probably it makes more sense to do episodic. Mm. X, X Files. It's every it's every TV show. It's mm. the story is encapsulated into the the runtime of one episode. Cool. So where where in the pitch bible would you normally include like information like that? Is that sh in show synopsis or do you have like a page with like here's kind of like almost like the meta of of the show like you know like Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't even sometimes I would avoid trying to guess at what technical things like sh show length mm. I would I would just try to sell a fun story, try to wrap people nice. up in a story, because that's what's that's what's fun to think. That's what I mean. If you're thinking about making a TV show, doesn't like you're get, the thing you're going to get most excited about if you're an executive is the vibe and the and how compelling the story is if it's entertaining. Mm -hmm. So I would leave any technical ideas you think like if you have ideas about the merchandise that you want to make for the show, don't put that in mm -hmm. your pitch package. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. They can decide that. That's like a business thing that, mm -hmm. that someone at a company can think about. Just try to make your thing a interesting story. That's yeah. That's my practical advice on that. That kind of thing. But I wouldn't. You... I wouldn't even put it in. I would just. This is my layout of what to put in. You got your title yeah. page. You got your show show synopsis. Mm -hmm. You could maybe mention vibes. That's just describe your show. You don't have to mention vibes. You got your characters, a little paragraph about your characters, and then you have some episode ideas, like three or four, mm. just to get the idea across. Um, and then you have just a contact page. It's like, <laughs> it's real basic. Um, just in case they don't know who you are at all, and, and you, you can put some stuff on there about you if you want. Yeah. Like your think, background. You know, it's, yeah, you should put, you should always put your contact information on something you're given to somebody. Oh, I just mean and, like, do you, do you like put like a bio on there? Like, yeah, do you, you can put do a bio. Put, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a nice, simple, that's very, you know, it's a simple packet. So, so like, do you sort of let, like, instead of having like, um, like a setting page or something like that, you sort of let that be introduced in the episode ideas or the show synopsis kind of like, as opposed to having like it, its own, I don't know, setting. I, I mean, like there's so many versions that people show all around of different Bibles and so many different page lengths that I always wonder like if there's specific reasons why you might leave something off. Wait, what was, what would we leave off? Oh, you... I was, I was just asking like, yeah. like, do you ever have a page for like the settings or the world? Like, like it, or explaining like world oh. rules, like what about your world is different? Or... I would put that all in the, on the show synopsis page. Like cool. you could, I mean, you could just write in a gritty metropolitan you know you could you can <laughs> yeah. describe the setting in a sentence cool do you ever in your pitches do one of these kind of like oh it's this show meets this show kind of thing yeah yeah i never i never really did that before but i think it's valid to do that you can do that if it helps mm. describe your show it's okay to do that ha have you although you know it depends like i've heard some people don't like that. Oh, mm. interesting. It's it's treacherous because if you say something and they don't like that show and they don't like that show or something, you know, yeah, yeah, you're true. you're you're invoking something, <laughs> you know, and you're you're plugging into your original idea. So that comes that can be good or bad. Mm. Yeah, recently I had that happen in a script where initially in the script it said it's this kind of show meets Rick and Morty. And because mm. Rick and Morty was kind of like a hot button issue, it was dramatic at that time because of the creator. There was a producer that that asked me to take it off of the packet before they pitched it. So I I, I have seen that kind of thing uh, in in person where where you might put down something that like either the show isn't liked by somebody or it doesn't age well or something like that. I get that. Mm. Writing Rick and Morty on a pitch too is like all you're all you're saying is that 
it's crazy, right? Like you're, you're like, no, you're no, like, no. It's kind of like for sure a crazy thing meets Star Wars. I, I, th I, I, I think that the initial intention was sort of like what Rick and Morty does for sci-fi. This would want to do for horror, that kind of thing. But oh, yeah, yeah. it was something. It was something like that. But I, I don't think that either way. I don't think that including that was like a. It, that important anyway it's funny because i i kind of got when i was trying to pitch i was trying to pitch a very specific style of comedy which i i like very slapsticky kind of comedy and somehow i feel like when i would put the word slapstick in the pitch people would just kind of be like a little bit put off by it because slapstick feels kind of dusty and old and kind of like unsophisticated in a way and so i was kind of trying to figure out i was trying to like kind of brainstorm it through some of my friends and they were like well what about like these kind of like live action movies like oh shoot i forgot the name of the the robin hood like movie men in tights yes men in tights yeah they're like what about men in tights and because it is slapsticky but it is like a, a live action so it feels a little bit maybe like less looney tunes in a way and sometimes like and then that's the moment when i kind of like thought huh i guess you can kind of help somebody envision what the tone of a like what the vibes could be through comparing with previous ips hmm. which is something i had never thought about before i guess that person told me this hmm. i was i was gonna ask if 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 there's ever been um a a pitch that you've done where you pitched anything unconventionally like something you might not think to put in a pitch like a i don't know like a vr thing or like a flip book or i, I don't know like <laughs> like when you pitch is it mostly a packet and you lay it out like this or do you ever throw in like a i don't know a little song or i don't know oh um i've sang a song before a pitch and that's how i pitched adventure time was with the the theme song written and my, my ukulele oh that's cool uh, a long time ago I, I heard an executive say never bring an instrument into a pitch that to like a a room full of people wondering how to pitch <laughs> but it doesn't matter you know it's like do whatever you want you know like i did it and and maybe it was charming or something uh, maybe uh, but you can do whatever you want. Just try and make it entertaining. <laughs> you know? That's good advice. Because also at the end of the day, I guess you kind of want to... Would you agree that you when, you when you go out to pitch, are you kind of dead set on getting a show greenlit? Or are you more interested in having people buying into your idea? If, that, if the question makes sense. It does seem like the same thing to me. I'm trying to like, sell it. Like, I feel like sometimes, I guess, there could be an instinct of like, well, I'm going to change my pitch to any kind of length or degree just so I can sell it rather mm -hmm. than staying true to the original vision. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think it's good to have a, like backbone about your ideas, you know, you can f to be confident in a pitch. I think mm -hmm. that's that's a good vibe for you to have as someone who's trying to sell something is that you mm -hmm. like your own thing and that you're you have reasons why you like it and you, uh, but uh, I mean, I don't know. Is, I think what? No, no, I was, I was going to, I was just going to ask is, is, is there anything that you can think of that like an exec or a development person was like, this won't work. And, and you were like, no, nah, I want to keep this. I don't know if that's too yes. sensitive or anything, but no, so on, on venture time, I'm trying to think of what's not, what's too sensitive to say, but at one point at one studio <laughs> there was an executive who was like i don't know about the dot eyes because at the time the dot eyes mm. were more nick jr it was more like uh it was like dot eyes were like preschool vibe mm -hmm. and then i think someone was didn't want the dot eyes i was like i want the dot eyes and i was real <laughs> adamant about it we can't relate to these characters if there's no realistic eyes i um at the time i didn't have any i hadn't really worked hardly anywhere so i didn't have any ground to stand on for i think i don't know pushing back on almost anything mm. and i think that might i don't know who knows i don't know i was i didn't i wanted to keep the dot eyes and i think that might have hurt me at the time at oh, the gotcha. one studio i was in 
Hmm. I don't know. I think when I was going, when I was trying to sell stuff in the beginning, I was like, I don't care. I'm going to try to sell anything. I was like, I'm an entertainer. I'm going to, I'm going to hmm. throw stuff in the garbage if it doesn't sell. And I'm going to try again to sell something. Hmm. Cause I just, cause like, if you sell something, you can make it good later. And that's what I kept thinking. Oh, so right. whatever it is, I don't know. I just thought I could, I could make it funny after I sold it. And I know a lot of people who stick to their, to their guns about their vision and then never sell anything. Then they're bitter for, <laughs> for years and years. So I would lean more towards like just trying to work with someone to see what they are interested in making mm. when you're trying to sell them something and then tailor your thing so that they're happy with it and you can be happy with it too. You just have to find, you just have to know that you're about to compromise if you're going to work yeah. in, in commercial art making. You're, mm. And if you can make that fun for yourself, then you might be happy compromising. But if, if it's, you have to like work at making it fun, I think. It's hard to, uh, because it's a relationship that you have with anybody when you're working together. I think with executives, you have a relationship and you're going back and forth about what everyone wants to make. Even when you get a show, it's not, it's ba barely your show. It's everyone's show who's working, all the artists who are working on it, because everyone's going to have ideas. Mm. So the, the fa if you can get good at giving up <laughs> on uh, <laughs> making sure everything is like the way that you want it made. <sighs> The happy, happier you'll you'll end up being, I think, when you're working on a show, if you sell one. I think that one of the most positive experiences I've ever had on a show was during a, a time on the Midnight Gospel. There was a joke that you pitched and a joke that I pitched, and then you told me my joke was funnier and to go with that. And and I it, I it, it was one of those things where like I'm in most cases a show creator pitching a joke and then you pick a joke like they they were probably gonna make their their joke it's their show you know sure but i i really i don't know there was something about that that made me uh really feel like i don't know like we were making something together and uh yeah yeah that's cool i'm glad that happened <laughs> <laughs> um i feel like i probably you know i probably wrote over someone else's joke at some point too you know <laughs> sure which is a bummer and like there's 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 good times for everybody i hope and then sometimes i redo work <laughs> which is always a bummer for sure yeah midnight was was a good one to approach with that philosophy of it's everyone's thing because it could be you know that show was crazy and uh, <laughs> the designs could be different every episode everyone everything can change the scenes change from from animated to animator which looked awesome um yeah i don't know that was a good one to to yeah be playful with in every way well i think that we've kind of figured out how this this bible for the most part mm -hmm. uh, you know it you know it's it's in sketch form but i think that it is enough for uh the audience to be able to understand how we would organize the ideas yeah uh i think we did a good job <laughs> if you want to if you're interested you can find the old adventure time bible that i made in my in my 20s when I didn't know what I was doing, it's online on Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D, I think. And you can look for Adventure Time Pilot or Pitch or something. Look for Pitch Bible. I think it's on there. You can Google for it. I like that we also kind of like went through the process together because we tried some things that didn't work and we had to kind of like throw it away. And I think this is so important. And especially like we tried with the like the two characters and then we tried an antagonist and we tried from the antagonist point of view and then we we're like okay it's actually not working yeah. like go back to the first two characters and kind of like really seeing how like different angles and how we could kind of make something like more simple and mm -hmm. i thought that was like a really interesting kind of uh, look into the creative process because we don't really get to cover a lot about how much like redoing and throwing away of ideas goes into making cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. And and I and I think that uh that that set a good example. And what what do you uh, what do you call that um pen? Do you call that killing your darlings or killing your babies or what? what I know people call it different names. Yeah, yeah. I learned both phrases at different times. Yeah, babies. Squish your squish your babies. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Once I said that to one of my friends, I was like, Oh, time to kill your babies and he was like, Don't ever say that. And I was like, Oh it's, it's I a... thought 
I thought all the TV people knew this. <laughs> so I felt like I was a monster. <laughs> yeah. One phrase is more monstrous than the other, and you can choose depending on the room that you're in. Yeah, because ki- killing your darlings is like, oh, okay, oh, darlings could just be some birds. <laughs> I don't even care about birds, you know? Like, That's so yeah, funny. ugly, ugly birds. Smushing your babies. Big, ugly ostriches. Ostriches. Yeah. <laughs> okay, strangle of the ostrich. Strangle Ostriches. the ostrich. I need you need you're gonna we're gonna need more hands over here to strangle this ostrich. It's got too much to, neck. We gotta drown an ostrich tonight. This is gonna be tough. They can get kind of mean. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I think it starts off mean. <laughs> like I feel like these there has to be a better way to 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 say getting rid of jokes. I mean, I guess you could just say that, but it's not that's not cute. Mm. Yeah, I feel like um in the comments uh, of this YouTube video, pitch us your own versions of uh you know what what how would you say uh you know getting rid editing out your jokes killing your babies killing your darlings <laughs> how would you say it uh listeners yeah oh my gosh but i i feel like uh i feel like we've come to kind of a natural conclusion would you like to take us out v oh yeah 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 um well I thought that was like I thought that was like such a fun look into the process, and I hope uh, y'all enjoyed it as much um, as we did. And uh, with that, it's the end of this creative plot. Uh, Pen, thank you so much for being our guest and sharing your insights. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to our listeners. Follow us on social media at CRTV Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. Huge thanks to our editor, Clemens, for editing the podcast, Marco for helping us produce the show, and Abuka for creating short clips that we've been putting out. And if you love our show, you can support us on Patreon. Becoming a patron gets you early access to interviews and access to our discord community but another great way you can support us is by interacting with our content like liking and subscribing and commenting Uh, it helps our episodes reach more people and you can access our links in the comment section of this episode i have been your host v and i was sean keep being creative and we'll see you next week bye bye